Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Um, I want to begin with a scripture here. I want to talk to you today about receiving through an impartation from the Holy Spirit. Interesting scripture. It's not the basis of our text today, but I just want to read it to you. It's from the book of Deuteronomy, and it's uh, Deuteronomy chapter 34 and verse 9. Listen to what it says. Now Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands on the children of Israel and heeded him, and he did as the Lord commanded. Now what's interesting about this scripture is that Joshua was getting ready to take over for Moses. And as he did, God said, you need something. You need a spirit of wisdom, of understanding, of revelation. You cannot go into the promised land without it. You see, as they were wandering in the wilderness, everyone thought that was the most difficult moment in their life when they're walking in circles and they're facing hunger and they're facing enemies and all those other things. But do you realize that was just the beginning of the challenge? The real challenge would be when they would enter into the promised land and they would face formidable enemies and they would not be able to fully conquer them for to this day Israel is still in a battle for its very existence, but God knew what he was doing. You see, God could have taken them out of Egypt and into the promised land. It really was a, a, an area that was only about 14 miles in time. In, in distance, and it would have only taken five days to get into the promised land had they gone the direct route. God took them through the wilderness, and they wandered for 40 years because, you see, first God got them out of Egypt, but then God had to get Egypt out of them. You see, there are things in your life, there's some things about Egypt in you today that prevent God from getting God in you in a fuller and a greater measure. And until the Egypt in you, that is the world, and those things that are alluring you, until those are pressed out of your life, you cannot walk in the fullness of God. You cannot really receive the impartation of the Holy Spirit that God wants to give you. Now, an impartation is something that is released on you. You absorb in the presence of others. Let me give you a couple of examples of how that works. When, when God wants to give you a spirit of wisdom and understanding, he, will, he can do it in three ways, primary ways. Many ways, obviously, God's not limited, but one is impartation. Story. A few years ago, I was pastoring a church, and I was able to make a contact with Jim Caviezel, pastor of the Christ, Jim Caviezel. And Jim is uh, one of the most intense human beings I've ever met in my entire life. If I took the most intense person I know and multiplied it times 100, that's Jim Caviezel. And he didn't want to stay out for the, the worship. He wanted to sit in my office, and we sat in the office, and we talked. And uh, his chair was right there. My chair was here, and as we were talking, I had all these thoughts going through my mind. This is the most intense human being I've ever been around in my life. He started talking about prophecy. He loved it because I, I could relate to that. It's one of my areas of expertise is, is prophetic future events. And uh, as we talked, he looked at me, and he goes, you're the only guy on earth that understands this stuff. And I go, oh, no, I'm like you. (laughs) And he talked about the passion of the Christ and what it took and all that he went through and how Satan had come to him and attacked him and all these amazing things. And by the time that we were now in the second service and I was sitting there, and again, my chair was just right across from him, and I'm sitting there like this, and and I had this thought. I was speaking to the Holy Spirit. Do you ever speak to the Holy Spirit while someone else is speaking to you? Because you just, you just, your spirit man can do that. So my spirit man was talking to the Holy Spirit, and, it, and as he was talking, I said to the Holy Spirit, I said, this guy is so committed. I don't think I'm as committed to Jesus as this guy is. And as he was talking, I, I said, Jim, how did you come to faith in Christ? And he gave me the most bizarre combination I'd ever heard in my life. From, a, from Catherine Coleman and Billy Graham. And I'm thinking, how do you put those two together? And as he's talking, I said, God, I just don't think I'm that committed. And the Holy Spirit said, do you want to be? You see, unless you want something from God, God's not going to give it. God's not going to let you sit back and, you know, I'm just waiting on the Lord. Yeah, you're going to be waiting in the same situation you've been all along. 
You know what a waiter is? You ever been to a restaurant and had a waiter? If that waiter never shows up, how big a tip does he get? Right? You're only going to give him a guilty tip. I feel guilty. My wife, I'll say, this guy is so bad. I'm only giving him 10%. She said, he's probably got, he's probably an only dad and got four kids and he had to walk to work and, you know, and I mean, she's painting this story and I'm going, next thing I know, he's 30%. I love you so much. You know, you poor guy, you know, he's probably got more money than me. But anyway, when you wait on the Lord, it means you're serving, you're active. God, what do you want? 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 What do you want, God? I want everything you got. I am so jealous for the presence of God. I want God in my life in everything I do. Amen? I want to see God work. If you're not hungry for God, God's not going to give you. He's not going to feed you. He doesn't feed the full. He feeds the hungry. Amen? And I see, he said, do you want to be? And I said, I do. And I don't know what it was. I don't know how to describe it, whether it was an impartation or an anointing of God. I sat there in that chair, and I felt a pressure come on my right side of my body in such a powerful way that to this day, when I just talk about it, I feel that same pressure, and it begins to almost make me feel like I'm spinning clockwise. What I didn't realize what God was doing there, God was moving me out of that church to start a church. But God had to do something in me before he could do something through me. God today wants to do something in you so he can do something through you. Amen? That's why we're here today. We're here to have an impartation. Sometimes that spirit of wisdom and understanding and revelation comes from just a process. You, you walk with God faithfully and you're sitting there and you're reading your scriptures and, and you're seeking out God and God begins through a process and all of a sudden you realize, wow, I've come to a, a, a spirit of wisdom and understanding and revelation. And then also a third way that I found is in the presence of God. When you enter into the presence of God, there's something that happens. The word uh, in the Hebrew for the word presence is the same word for glory. It's a similar root word. And what it literally means is something that's weighty. And when you walk into the, to a room that has the presence of God, it feels like the room's a little heavy. There's something, you just say, I feel the presence of God. Sometimes I've found that, that there are certain parts of a building that have greater presence than other parts of the building. I can identify them in my church, in our church building back in Anaheim Hills. I walk in there and I know it's almost like there's portals of his presence there. And, and what God wants to do is God wants you to come greater into the presence of God. You say, well, how do I do that personally? You do it by acknowledgement. I acknowledge your presence, God, and I want more and more of you. Now, um, I love the, uh, the story of the Brooklyn Tabernacle. If you don't know that story of that church in New York, it's a fascinating story to read. But Jim Cimbala, he wrote this in, in his book, and it was so powerful I just wanted to share it with you. He said, I despaired at the thought. I despair to the thought that my life might pass me by without God moving greatly on my behalf. When you come to a place, you say, the thing that I want more than anything else is for God to move in me and through me on my behalf. And the worst thing that I could ever think of is not cancer. It's not poverty. It's not no friends or relationships. It's not any of those things. The worst thing that could ever happen to me is God is not moving in me and through me on his behalf. That's what I want more than anything, more than my necessary bread. When, you know, when, when, when can, I, can I find you, God? Day and night, my tears have been my only food. As a deer pants after the water brook, so pants my heart after thee, O God, the living God. And the psalmist pictures that, that deer that's running through the, from the, probably from the hunter, and he, he, that deer's thinking, I just need a sip of water. If I could just have a sip of water, I can't stop long enough to get a sip of water because I'm running to the presence of God. I'm running to the Father, and I'm my heart, and everything in me is pounding in me, and there's something happening in me because all I can do is cry because I want to be in your presence. That is my food. That is my drink. That is my sustenance. That's what I desire. Paul, right, amen. Put your hands together and give God the glory. Let me show you something from the book of Ephesians. If you have your Bibles, Ephesians chapter 1. And we're going to take you through a couple of verses there uh, as we kind of process this idea. And I want to give you the end now from the beginning. You know, a mystery story is, is bad if you read the end first. But I want to tell you, this is not a mystery that we think of. This is one that I want you to understand. At the end of this service, we've actually moved the chairs. Uh, we've taken one row out here because we had so many people this morning that we couldn't get everybody in to fill in 
for this time that we're going to have to pray and anoint you with oil and ask for an impartation of the Holy Spirit on you for wisdom and revelation. So at the end, we're going to, I just want to advance warn you that we want you to come and, and if, if your heart's hungry for that. And if it's not, if your heart's not ready for that, it's okay. It's okay. Um, but I, I want to tell you in advance, the importance, the importance of faith. Faith is so critical to our life. And a lot of times when I'm talking to people, they say, I don't have great faith. I said, uh, they say, I just have little faith. Good, that's what we're looking for. And they look at me like I'm crazy. I say, what, what do you mean you're looking for little faith? Yeah, we want little faith people because little faith people move mountains. Isn't that what Jesus said? If you have a little faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say unto this mountain, be picked up and moved into the ocean, and it will what? Obey you. Well, I have great faith. Good, we can use those too. And James even talked about perfect faith. Because you see, faith has all kinds of different variances. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15, look at what Paul writes to the Ephesian church. Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith, hey, is everybody up here in your neighborhoods and in your community, are they hearing about your faith? I heard about the faith over there at Elevate Church. I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love, the love that you have for all the saints, that is all the believers, right? And do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Now, here's how I'm praying. Watch this. Paul's prayer for them is this, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Father of glory, that's the New Testament word for presence. Literally, you know what the presence means? It means the face of God. When you're into the presence of God, you're into the face of God. You ever gotten somebody's face in a good way? Okay. The God of the, uh, the Father of glory may give you, notice this is a gift, may give you what? Look what it says here. May give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. How would you like to have walk out of here with the wisdom of God? How about the revelation? That is to see things the way God sees things. You've got a supernatural insight into things. You're looking to go, I don't know why I understand this or why I see the things that I see, but this must be God. God's up to something in me, and it is in the knowledge of him. So as I get this wisdom and I get this revelation, I now understand everything. I'm downloading from God all the stuff from God. We have a friend in South Africa. Her name's Rietta McPherson, and Rietta's been at our church uh, several times. We've been in South Africa ministering there in Cape Town and different parts of South Africa. And uh, she had a, a terrible accident uh, years ago where t her two boys were thrown from the van. One was basically pronounced dead. A preacher stopped along the way, just happened to be on this county line road, stopped and said, began to speak life over him. And, and long story is he spent probably uh, well over a year in a coma and and God was just working in him. But when he woke up, this is interesting, he, he really doesn't walk very well. He's blind in one eye. And all he could do was write. He started to write in very kind of, but, but the interesting thing that happened, while he was in heaven, out of touch with humanity, God downloaded the entire Bible to him. He woke up as a 10-year-old boy with the entire Bible memorized. Don't tell me there's not miracles. Spirit of wisdom, revelation. God can download anything he wants into you, but you may not want it. Because once you get it, you're responsible for it. Are you really responsible enough for what God wants to give you? See, we've got, we've got a, a, you know, a, a six-year-old granddaughter. If I said, here's a new car and here's the keys, I'm giving it to her because I can, but she's not mature enough to be responsible with it. So some things God's not going to give you the keys to until you get responsible enough to carry it faithfully and not hurt other people with it. Hello. The more you talk to me, the better the preaching gets. Less talk and it goes straight downhill. Then all I can do is just preach longer. I have no choice. Amen? Okay, now watch this. You were designed by God to hear and recognize the voice of God. My sheep hear my voice, and they what? They follow me. How am I going to follow him if I don't hear his voice? I'm listening to my voice. My voice doesn't work very well when it comes to following after God. 
So you were designed by God. You have the capacity given by God to hear and recognize the voice. You say, well, how do I know it's his voice? You will know his voice because if you're his sheep, you will know what he sounds like. Let me give an example. If you ever feel like the voice inside of you is nagging, hurry up. you got to do this. you got to do this. That's the voice of Satan. God never nags. He speaks with a still, small voice and says, I've got this. Can you say that, I've got this? I got this. Okay, now watch this. The problem is that we strive in the natural realm to hear his voice, and that silences the voice of God. So what you have to do is you say, well, have you ever said, I just got to hear from you. God, God, will you speak to me? God, I'm so desperate, and you're crying. No, God doesn't, God doesn't respond to those moments. Then you leave that moment, and you say, I guess God's not speaking, and you get in your car, you're driving down the road, you've got some praise music on, and, and next thing you know, God's speaking to you. You go, what happened? Because your spirit man was then open. And what you're doing is when you were trying to hear in the natural man in your mind, you were closing off the spirit man, and he couldn't respond. So striving silences the voice of God. You see, what revelation does, it opens up new realms of faith in your life. Do you know that faith have realms? It's not just little faith, great faith, you know, perfect faith. No, there are realms of faith where you begin to enter into. There's some people that have such great faith, and, and they, you don't even know where did that come from, and it's just so natural. And I, what I found about faith is if I don't push myself into the uncomfortable, I never enter into the next realm. If your faith is comfortable, then you're not operating in faith. You're operating in your confidence. I know when I'm operating in faith because right after I announce what God is going to do, I feel like I made a big mistake. I say, God's going to do this, and I'm going, why did I say that? Now everybody's going to ask me. They're going to come and go, hey, how's God working? I go, well, you know, and I see them coming. I'm running. No, I want to, you want to get on the edge of disaster, disaster. If God doesn't come through, then you look like a fool. That's faith. That's faith. You ever spoken on stage? One of the things about speaking on stage, if you feel comfortable up here, you're boring. Right? When I see a couple of you nodding out, I just got to go, hey, I got to get something going here. Right? Because you have to overact to look normal on stage. Opera singer of ours told us that, and I said, what's a great performance? It's when somebody claps, when somebody laughs, and when somebody cries. If you can get two out of the three, you've got a great performance. And I said, well, how do you get that? He said, you have to act so uncomfortable on stage that you look normal to everybody else. God wants you to act so uncomfortable in the area of faith that he comes through. And he begins to clap, and he begins to cry, and he begins to laugh. He begins to look at you and go, I love you. I love what you're up to. All right, so let me just keep going here so we keep it going. So what happens is this: these things that God wants to do, this wisdom and understanding, it's locked, but you don't unlock it. God unlocks it for you. So God will unlock the mysteries to you in such a way that you will, you will begin to understand it's the voice of God. Well, how do I know that voice? Well, it will have a freshness on it. You'll go, wow, where did that come from? That's new and, and that's insightful. And, that, and people go, well, how would you get that idea? And you go, well, God just showed it to me. Well, that, the only explanation is God. If the explanation is you, it may not be God. Because what will happen in that situation, your faith will begin to grow. All of a sudden you go, I got fresh faith. I got something coming new that's coming in my life. And your faith will come then from God. It's not your faith. It's the faith of God. I love this, uh, this quote from Charles Price. He said, there is a great difference between the faith of man in God and the faith of God that is imparted to man. I believe in God. Well, when you get the faith of God in you, you're operating by the faith of God, you begin to do the things that God wants you to do. The hope of your calling. Let me show you this, Ephesians 1.18. The eyes of your understanding. Did you know your, your heart, your spirit man has eyes? You ever been reading the Bible? I did this the other day, and I said, I just found this verse. Like it wasn't in there. No, God got up in the morning. He wrote it in every Bible on planet Earth. It was a miracle, miracle of all miracles. That verse was never in there. I literally preached on this like two weeks ago. Capernaum, right? Anybody ever heard of Capernaum? 
Raise your hand and act like you really know the Bible. I've heard of Capernaum. Yeah, that's a town Jesus ministered in. He did more miracles in Capernaum than any other, any other town. Do you know what it says of, of Capernaum of him? He called it his own city. He wasn't born there. He wasn't raised there, but he called his own city. You know, he did more miracles there, taught more lessons there than any other one. He said, that's my own city. I just found that verse. I didn't know it was in there. What happened? God gave me eyes to see it for the first time. Some things that God's going to show you in your Bible today, it's going to be first-time stuff. You're going to go, wow, I never saw that before. God just showed that to me, and it's now yours because guess what? That was a word from the Word. That was a rima revealed from the Logos. That was God saying, I got a word for you today, and you're not going to have to function apart from me. You're going to function with me in my power, in my authority. I'm going to take control of you. Don't worry, you worry about it. The hope of your calling, the hope of your calling, Ephesians 1.18. The eyes of your understanding being what? Enlightened. Why? Why would I need that? That I might know the hope of his calling. I can't know what he's up to without him giving me revelation. What are the riches of the glory of the inheritance of the saints? You know you have an inheritance that's the same as Jesus's? Join heirs with Christ, heirs of God, join heirs with Jesus. Everything Jesus inherits, you inherit. He said, well, I'm ready. It's coming. Sometimes God gives you installments here on earth, but he gives, you, he gives you the full revelation of it in eternity. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? Now, spiritual understanding, you can say, I've got spiritual understanding. Would you know that that can go to another level? That can be enlightened. So you can have greater light. The psalmist said, in thy light do we see light. Did you catch that? In your light, I see light. If I'm not functioning in, in his light, I'm not going to get more light, more revelation, more understanding. Are you with me? Are you with me? Are you all with me? Amen. All right. I just want to make sure. All right. Now, watch this. Leonard Ravenhill said, Jesus did not come into the world to make bad men good. He came into the world to make dead men live. Amen. You say, well, he's a good Christian. That's not in the Bible. Find me somewhere it says he's a good Christian as a category of functionality. It says you either walk in the spirit or you walk in the flesh. We should change our whole terminology and say he's, spirit, he's walking the spirit or he's walking the flesh. Hey, how about one, how's your day going? Great. Are you walking the spirit today? Well, I don't know. I hadn't thought about that. I'm a good Christian, though. Oh, yeah, we already know about those kind. Isn't it funny how we do it? He's a, how about this one? They're a really good Christian. So here's a good Christian, really good Christian. What do they do? They just don't do four of those other things a good Christian does. That's all, right? He is an unbelievable Christian. What does he do? Oh, well, he comes to church every week. Those are false categories to make us feel about, feel good about our where we are in life, but it doesn't move us into the spirit realm. We just got to start changing our terminology. Say, I'm going to walk in the spirit. Paul says in Galatians 5, if I walk in the spirit, I'll not fulfill the desires of the flesh. The key is not trying to not do something that's bad. The key is to walk in the spirit so I don't want to do anything. My water changes. Amen? All right. Thanks, Mom. Had one clap over there. Mom, thanks. All right, now, confidence in your life is a mark of stability. You see someone without confidence, they're, they're lacking stability in some area, social, financial, educational, something's going on there. God can be your stability. You can be without money completely and be stable. You can never go to school and be stable. See, the key is not all those things that we think are our stability. The key is God. We have good friends, Carrie and Guy Bailey in our church, and we've traveled with them. They're great friends. They have two young boys. They're probably in their, they're about 40 years old. And last October, Guy uh, had a heart issue and went into a coma. He's been in a coma since last October. He's since come out of the coma, but not speaking. He's still asleep. There's another phase of that or stage of that. And so you go in there, and he knows you're there, and, and sometimes he can move his foot or he can blink uh, in acknowledgement, but he can't speak. 
Now, you would think if you're the wife of Guy, your life is, is just totally done. You feel un, you don't know where to go with that. And you think you're going to find her in discouraging moments. And I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, we've watched her now since October. And I have never in my life, I think the greatest miracle is Carrie. And the way that she responds with positive faith and grace and expectation. And the only explanation I have is God. And we spend our life sometimes complaining about the little things instead of realizing what's going on in the big things in our world. I can't explain that except that stability, her confidence is in Almighty God. You see, power and faith are inseparable. You can't have faith and not have power to overcome your situation. If, you don't have, if you're being overcome by your situation, don't worry about trying to fix your situation. Worry about your power source. Am I getting enough power to supply the problem that I'm facing in my daily life? Because there's where the problem comes in. You see, the right hand of God is something pretty amazing. The Bible says that Jesus was raised from the dead and seated at the right hand of the Father. The psalmist said at the right hand of the Father are joys forevermore. Jesus said, I don't give you the joy of this world. I give you my joy, that my joy may be in you, that your joy may be full. If you don't have joy, then you don't have God living his fullness in you. Blame yourself. Don't blame God. Don't blame your circumstances. Don't blame your, your friends or your spouse. Blame you. Because he said, I, you, got, you have all my joy. Why don't you just take it? It's kind of like he looked at the disciples and said, hey, guys, I, I'm, I'm struggling here. We've been traveling together. We've been camping and doing all kinds of cool stuff together, the 12 of us. And up until now, you've asked nothing in my name. You've seen me do miracles, but up until now, you've asked nothing in my name. You've been with me almost a year, and you've asked nothing in my name. Don't you want to see me do something? Why don't you ask for something significant and big enough to get my attention? I think we are boring God with the littleness of what we ask. <laughs> Ain't no angels going to show up in that situation. They're not needed. Ask that your joy might be made full. There it is again. That your joy might be made full. When you ask, the fullness of joy comes in you. The fullness of joy is Jesus. When I don't have the fullness of Jesus, I don't have joy. I don't operate in that realm whatsoever. Now that clock up there is wrong. It says I'm out of time. <laughs> so now the rest of the sermon I'm going to speak at 180 words a minute. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Ephesians 1.20, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead, seated him at the right hand of the Father in heavenly places, above all principality, power, might, and dominion, every name that is named in this age and the age to come. What did he do for Jesus? He raised him from the dead. He seated him in heavenly places. He gave him dominion and authority over all. Guess what it says in Ephesians 2.4, and you also he's raised up to seated in heavenly places. Guess what? He's given you power, authority, and dominion. You have all those things. You have all that. Leonard Ravenhill said, we spend our, 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 our life, many are, of us are hunting mice when lions are devouring the land. You ever been around? You, you, I've done this, so I'm, I'm not going to say if you've ever been around. I have done this. Complained about the littlest things. I walked away from a situation just the other day, and I said, did you see that guy? He had a big, big stain right here on his shirt. He might like it. My wife didn't say anything. I got home. I look, I had a bigger stain on mine. I'm worried about the little stain. I got the big stain. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. This is where we're going to transition to this, this last part of what we're doing, and that is, um, would you all just stand with me? By the way, I love being here. You guys are great. Uh, it's my first time to speak here. I was here with Tammy when she spoke, and and just grew to love your church, love your pastor and his family, and um, just consider it an honor and a privilege to be here with you today. But here's what we want to do: we want to uh, we want to impart to you, as we talked about early, that sometimes an impartation literally comes from me putting my hand on someone, and that wisdom, that understanding for me is transferred. Sometimes it's a process. Right? And sometimes it's in the presence. 
what we want to do is we've got our prayer team up here, and they're, they're equipped. I've asked them to, to be ready with some anointing oil. The Bible says that the, the oil is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. It's a great reminder when you go out throughout your day, but I believe that it's also an act of faith. And I know that I'm looking here and I'm going, if all of you come down here, it'll be awesome. You say, we'll never fit. Well, it's kind of like the reverse fish and bread story, right? We're going to figure out how we get more fish and bread into a small spot than we can. But, but here's what we want to do. We want to ask you to come and we want to have our team anoint you. Uh, I'm going to put on the screen here a prophetic blessing that I wrote. And I want you just to repeat it after me here in a moment, but let me just read it to you. In Jesus' name, I receive the impartation of wisdom and understanding. So I have to be hungry for it. I recognize this is a gift. I didn't earn it, didn't deserve it, didn't come expecting it. It's a gift given by the Holy Spirit. I believe that I was designed to hear and to recognize His voice so that I may unlock new realms of faith. This impartation of wisdom and understanding will silence the enemy. Position me to reach new levels of spiritual power and authority, and I receive this in Jesus' name. So here's how this is going to work this morning. We're going to ask you as the, as the musicians and the singers sing that you're just going to come here at the front. You're going to, you don't have to linger long, but they're going to anoint you with oil, and then we're going to turn our eyes to these screens, and, and I'm going to say this. You're going to repeat it after me. Remember, it's your faith, not mine. I just wrote the words, but it's your heart that has to respond. Amen? So let's just take a minute. Just come forward now and just, just all of you. I mean, I just say everybody ought to come, but you let the Lord lead you. Just come up here, and we're going to pray for you, and then we're going to, we're going to have this prophetic blessing over you. Just come quickly. We're not gonna we're not gonna take a long time with this, so we want you to come quickly. I always say never wait till it's comfortable. Just follow follow the spirit, whatever the spirit tells you, and just ram in here. You don't have to wait until you get lined up behind somebody. Just I always just say, make it make it messy. Holy Spirit's really kind of messy sometimes when he starts moving in our midst. Just hey, all you guys that are bottlenecking over there, just kind of just ram in here. Just come in here. We love you guys so much. Thank you, God, guys. And prayer team, just go through and just kind of, amen, 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 and amen. Holy Spirit, fall right now in this place. Fall in your mighty power with wisdom and revelation and understanding. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, in great power, great authority. Do what only you can do. Now, if you'll turn your eyes to the screen, I, I want you just to say this with me. And you can just keep moving up here and just receive this, this anointing of oil. Repeat after me in Jesus' name. I receive the impartation of wisdom and understanding. I recognize that this is a gift given by the Holy Spirit. I believe that I was designed to hear and recognize His voice so that I may unlock new realms of faith. This impartation of wisdom and understanding will, will silence the enemy and position me to reach new levels of spiritual power and authority. I receive this in Jesus' name. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.